So in this video, we're going to look at finding the polar coordinates of the point P on the curve R equals sine 2 theta, where theta is restricted between 0 and pi over 2 inclusive, where the curve has a tangent perpendicular to the initial line. Now, all the problems we've looked at so far, we've been looking at tangents that are parallel to the initial line. So this time, P is at a point where it is perpendicular, so it makes a right angle with the initial line. OK, and so we can think of point P as having Cartesian coordinates of, with that angle being theta, R cosine theta. So X would be R cosine theta and the Y coordinate would be R sine theta. OK, so we know X is equal to R cosine theta. So let's just have that for one moment. Now, from the previous videos, we know that we're going to be working with dy by dx because we're looking at tangents here to the curve. So dy by dx, and we're going to use the chain rule to break that apart. So we can write it as dy by d theta times by d theta by dx. And of course, we could rewrite that as dy by d theta over dx by d theta. So that if we're looking at tangents that are parallel to the initial line, then as in the previous videos, we were looking at dy by d theta being zero. But if we're looking at it being perpendicular to the initial line, then we need dx by d theta to be zero. So that is what we need to be zero in order to consider lines perpendicular to the initial line. And that's why I've written down x equals r cosine theta, because we're going to need to differentiate it to find dx by d theta. Now, before we do that, we still have x in terms of r, and so we swap out the r with the sine 2 theta with the curve that we are considering. So we can write x as sine 2 theta, that's the r, times cosine theta. And now we're going to differentiate, so we need to find dx by d theta. So dx by d theta, and we're going to use the product rule, will be the first times the derivative of the second. Now the cosine theta will differentiate to minus sine theta, so we'll have minus sine 2 theta sine theta plus the second times the derivative of the first, so plus 2 cosine 2 theta cosine theta. And we're going to need that to be put equal to 0. So 0 is equal to minus sine 2 theta sine theta plus 2 cosine 2 theta cosine theta. Now what can I do with this? Now you should notice that we've got the sine 2 theta and we've got the cosine 2 theta, so we can use our double angle formula for that. So I'm going to start off with replacing sine 2 theta with 2 sine theta cos theta. So 0 is equal to, so we'll have minus 2 sine theta cos theta times sine theta. So without writing another line of working, I can replace that just with sine squared theta cosine theta. So that is the minus 2 sine theta cos, sorry, sine theta cos theta times sine theta. So I've just rewritten as sine squared, okay? I'll leave this one alone for the moment because I know that in the next line I can factorize. Now, I've got these twos, so I can divide through by two, that's fine. And I can factor out the cosine theta now. So I'll do that next. So 0 is equal to cosine theta. I've got the cosine 2 theta. Take away sine squared theta. Now, cosine 2 theta, we've got the double angle formula for that. Now, it makes sense to use the one with sine squared because it's got sine squared already there. So we can collect like terms. So cosine 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared. So 0 equals cosine theta, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta 
take away another sine squared th theta, so 3 sine squared theta. Okay, so now we can say, well, if this is going to be equal to 0, either the cosine theta is 0, or the sine squared theta is 1 third. And of course, if sine squared theta is 1 third, then either sine theta is 1 over root 3, or sine theta is minus 1 over root 3. So a quick little sketch of cosine. Okay, so there is your pi over 2. So that is the point where it is 0. So theta equals pi over 2 for that one. Sine theta, let's do a quick sketch of sine. Okay, so 1 over root 3. So we've got one solution there. So that's where your pi over 2 is. So we've got one solution there. So we want the inverse sine of 1 over root 3. Make sure we calculate those in radians. So theta is 0 0.6155. I'll do it to four decimal places. 4 dp. Now the sine theta equals minus 1 over root 3 has no solutions uh, in the range. OK, so remember we're just looking at between 0 and pi over 2 here. So we've got two values of theta. So I want the polar coordinates. Now, of course, of point P. Now, of course, at this point, uh, with theta equals pi over 2, we would have R is equal to sine of two lots of pi over 2, so sine of pi, which is 0. So we have 0 pi over 2, which is this point down here. OK? I'm not interested in that one. I'm interested in P. So that will be coming from the other value for theta. So I need to substitute that value of theta back into this to work out the value of r. So sine of two lots of that is 0 0.9428 to four decimal places, and the theta is 0 0.6155. And so they're the polar coordinates of point P, where uh, we have that the curve has a tangent perpendicular to the initial line between 0 and pi over 2.